Thank you for that awesome worship. Uh, I am so glad to be here uh, in the house of the Lord one more time. Thank you, Pastor Castle, uh, for inviting me here today. Uh, my heart is, is, is truly happy. Uh, I was just thinking uh, on yesterday how proud your mother would be and how proud my father would be. Uh, just a little history before I get into my lesson. Uh, I don't know if many of you know, but your pastor uh, is a musician by heart. Uh, I remember he started on the drums. Uh, he was a tremendous drummer first lady. I don't know if you know him, but he's a tremendous drummer. Uh, and he was musically, or he is musically inclined. Because if my memory serves me correctly, he went from the drums to the bass. Uh, he was a bass player. Would play there for praise and worship, and then for <laughs> he would he would play during during the service. Uh, and then once he accomplished the, the drums and bass he start tinkling on the, the organ <laughs> uh, so he is has many gifts God has blessed him with with many 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 gifts and I am just glad to be here to to minister today and to share what God has given me to to give to you um, I am not my father, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord. Uh, and my method, my way is my method and my way. So if I'm a little slow, uh, please bear with me. Uh, I want to do what the Lord says to do. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I'd like to dive right into the scripture uh, found in Proverbs chapter 24 just two verses there uh, verse 10 and verse 16 uh, Proverbs 24 verse uh, 10 and verse 16 when you get it I'm going to ask that you all stand to your feet uh, for the reading of God's word Proverbs 24 verse number 10 and I'm reading from the New King, King James Version so it may read somewhat different from what you have. It says uh, if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small. Uh, verse 24 and 16 it says for a righteous man may fall seven times and rise Again, uh, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. And God had a blessing to the reading, most of all, the doing of his word. Uh, gracious Father, we ask that you would direct, direct me, lead me. I pray that I will decrease, you will increase. I will speak your words, nothing more, nothing less. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may have your seats. This is a bit unusual for me because I'm not used to all of the lights and the glamour. So if I stumble, just, just credit it to me being nervous. But I promise you, I'm going to do my best and make my way. Uh, Proverbs, these two scriptures here, speak of... Uh, an Old Testament time, and they suggest to me uh, my topic sermon is let's get serious. Right. Yeah, let's get serious. Uh, in the scripture, there is a time and season for all things. 
There's a time for folly. There is a time for play. But that time expires. And then there is a time for sincerity and work. When it's a time for play, it's not a time for seriousness. Have you ever noticed some folk are serious all the time? Uh, they stick out like a sore thumb. You, they, 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 they don't want to joke or they, they can't tease. You can't tease with them. You can't joke with them. They're, Serious all the time. They take themselves too serious at times. And they can't make light of anything. So uh, you don't like to play with them because they're just serious all the, all the time. But the converse is true. That... Uh, when it's time for sincerity, it's not a time for play. Because the same commentary is made on, seri on the serious side as well as the playful side. So uh, I've come here to, to say that most of us are at the stage in life when it's time to get serious. Yeah, it's time to get serious. Truth be told, we have wasted a lot of time playing in foolish, foolishness and folly. And so I have come to share with you from the book of wisdom an insight about it's time to get serious. Pro Proverbs gives us a pithy of antidotes that come to bring insight. Uh, there are several brief thoughts in this particular passage of scripture that I'd like to share with you. And the first is, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. The writer is suggesting here that we are all going to face adversity. And at the same point in our lives, <laughs> that there is some rain that is going to fall on us. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. Some rain is going to fall. You may not call it rain. You may call it struggle. You may call it trouble. You may call it pain. But the common denominator is that some trouble, rain, whatever you label it, is going to fall in your life. But the writer gives us something worth listening to. He challenges us. The writer says that while adversity is common among all of us, there is an expectation of standing. <laughs> There is an expectation of standing. What do you mean by that, Pastor Sherman? I mean that you ought to stand regardless of what you're going through. You ought to stand regardless of what situation you're in. All that I'm suggesting here is that the scripture says that when adversity arises in our life, which is going to arise in your life that you should have the gumption, the tenacity to stand. 
The expectation is you ought to stand anyway. The expectation is uh, we look to stand in adversity. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how it outnumbers me. I'm going to stand. What do you mean by adversity, Pastor? It, it, it's a universal term. It's, it's a broad term. It, 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 it means that whatever it is that comes against you, it could be monetary. It could be physical. Whatever it is that is coming against you, the Bible says it wants you to stand. There, 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 there is, give it to me, Lord. There's something in you that should tell you to stand. Let, let, me, let, let me go a little deeper. Some of you are in a toxic relationship. Uh, the relationships, uh, our relationship has deteriorated. It has fallen apart. Part. And, and I, I suggest to you to cry. Cry your heart out. But don't cry past Tuesday. Because I want you to. Oh, y'all going to have to help me now. Uh, it's a very simple message, and I'll be here for another 15 minutes. But if you don't talk to me, I, 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 I have at least six pages here. And we can go on and on and on and on and on and on. Uh, I, I just want to say that the expectation here in the scripture is that you should stand. Uh, coming up, uh, I heard Pastor, Pastor Terry was, Pastor Castle was, I'm sorry, Pastor Castle was talking and it reminded me of the song we used to sing when we were coming up. It, we are soldiers. In the army, we have to fight, although we have to. We, we, and here's, we have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we what? And then in the second verse, here's where I want to go. It says, my mother, she was a soldier. She had a hand on the gospel ply. It says, one day she got old. And she couldn't fight anymore, but she stood there. Oh, you're going to have to help me. And what did she do when she stood there? Said she stood there and fought anyhow. In other words, she was willing to stand. And that's the message I want to convey to you that uh, we want you to be able to stand uh, in adversity. Stand when uh, things are not going right. Stand when you're having difficulty in your health. Stand when your money's not uh, equaling your bills. Stand when pastor asks you to give sacrificially and you don't have it. Stand when you step out on faith. Stand when uh, it doesn't look like it's going to add up. I'm sitting here saying, stand. When you have nothing else to do, you can S. T A N D. Oh, our, our children have gone crazy. Uh, our daughters are pregnant. Our sons are having babies. Uh, they're selling drugs. They're in and out of jail and in and out of trouble. And uh, they, they, you don't know what to do. And they have the audacity. To, to raise their voice at you. They don't know who you are. I, I, I want you to, 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 rather than pull your hair out, I want you to take a deep breath and, and push your shoulders back and take a step forward, lean forward. And if you have to ball up your fists, ball up your fists, but I want you to stand. The writer makes an assessment that if you fall, you faint. Your strength is small if, 
if, if you're still crying, in other words, he's saying if you're still crying about that relationship, if you're still whimping or whimpering about that situation that didn't go your, your way, or you're having a pity party with your friends, your, your strength is small. Well, he says here in his word, he says, you, you cannot make it if you have small strength. Yeah. Hey, similar to little faith, you can't make it if you have little faith. That's one thing my father taught us is that we have to have some measure of faith. Uh, uh, faith to, to, to be on a hundred radio stations at one time. Uh, uh, faith to be on TV, the first black man to ever be on TV in the 60s and 70s. You, you have to have some measure of faith. Yeah, my kids are out of control, but I believe by God that they will line up to what his word says. I'm a living example of that. And here's my story. I didn't want to preach. I ran from being a preacher. I, <laughs> I, something that I did not. I saw my father do it. I saw him put the blood, the, blood, the sweat, and the tears into ministry. And oftentimes the payout is not as great. You don't get the credit. The, the behind the scenes things that pastors do, members never see. But kids see. And that's something that I never wanted to do. And I ran from it. Prophecy after prophecy, I ran from it. Talking about standing here. And I didn't want to do it. Now, and get this. I had two accidents where I broke this jaw. And I didn't want to preach. And then some years later, I, in a car accident, I broke this jaw. And when I broke the second jaw, with my jaw wide, I said, yes, Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, I will do it. And so, you, you know, we can make confessions, but... Anybody ever made a, a vow and didn't keep it? Come on. Now, you got caught up in the situation. You made some vows, and, and then when time elapsed, you said, well, I, maybe I won't give uh, that pledge. Uh, maybe I'll hold on to my tithes. It seems as those things are, 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 are better now, so I'll just keep that in my pocket. Well, I made that confession. And <laughs> one... Uh, Thursday night during our world convention, my, past, my, my father called me out. He says, Friday, he said, my son is preaching his first sermon. And I was upset. Hey, anybody been upset? Kids been upset with your parents? I got, you got any kids been mad with your parents? Oh, little baby with red and pink, you been mad at your mama sometimes? Oh, she's, I understand. <laughs> been, been, been afraid. I, I, I was upset with my father. And, and I confronted him in the back. How dare you? Without consulting me and asking me, how dare you? He said, it's going to be all right, son. He said, it's going to be all right. And I said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to show up. He said, oh, yes, you will. And I want you to know that Thursday, Friday night, guess what? I showed up. And I've been preaching ever since. <laughs> I, I, I say that to say that uh, don't give up. You got to stand when it doesn't look like it's going to work. You have to stand. Uh, here's another example. Doing this virus, our money has been funny. And, and God has still met the need. Oh, oh. I, I haven't been walking in surplus or overflow, but he said, give us this day, our day. I'm not worried about tomorrow. Just help me today, Lord. He has opened a financial door for me every day. He has met my need. The righteous in verse 16. I'll come back to 10. Let me jump to 16. He says, 
for the righteous man <laughs> may, may fall seven times and rise again. I, I want to define righteous. Uh, it, it, it means right standing. A person that is in right standing with God. In other words, uh, I have a relationship with him. And because I have a relationship with him, I can talk to him. And because I have a relationship with him, he can talk to me. Because we are in relationship, it, 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 it informs of my behavior. Because I'm in relationship, I'm going to act a certain way. Because I'm in relationship, there are some things that I'm not going to do. Because I'm in relationship with him, I act a certain way. Come on, uh, married couples. Because you are married, there you, you carry yourself in a certain way. Okay, let me, let me broaden my scope here. Uh, I may not be married, but I have a significant other. <laughs> that I, I carry myself in a certain way. I, 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 I want to be with this person. I have committed to this person. So because I, have, I am in a relationship with this person, that means certain things I won't and will do. The scripture reads, a righteous man will fall seven times in other words no matter how righteous you are <laughs> somebody you are vulnerable to fall no matter how pure you are no matter how lofty or high you consider yourself no matter how lovely or lowly you are you are susceptible to falling. <laughs> and the reason I want to highlight this is because the enemy will come and try and isolate you. Because of your thoughts, he'll come and try and isolate you. Because you have fallen, the enemy comes to pick you away or or, or prick you away and get you all by yourself uh, and, and, and begin to work on your mind. I, I, I just want to say that, that we can't allow that to happen. The enemy begins to talk to you. He begins to, to. That's why Jesus sent them out. Two by two. Because iron sharpens iron. Uh, when one is dis discouraged, the other encouraged. He didn't send them out one by one, but he coupled them together. There, there is something in, 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 in doing ministry together. I want you to know that he, he wants you by yourself because the they say when you divide, you can conquer. And that is the strategy here that uh, if you divide the multitude, you can conquer them one by one. And that's his plan is to divide you and conquer you. But I, I, I suggest to you today that if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, if you don't allow Satan in and, and give him uh, uh, area in you, you will, he says, if you resist the devil, he will. I don't know about you, but I want him to flee. Uh, flee from my life. Free from my health. Free from my finances. Uh, I want him to flee. But I'm learning he'll flee, but it doesn't mean he'll stay away. I'm learning that he'll come back. The Bible says he comes back every now and then to check to see if your house is in order. I don't share this all the time, but I'll share it with you that spirits and demons are real. Be careful where you go. 
Be careful who you associate yourself with. Be careful what you read. Be careful what you watch on TV. Be careful because these spirits and demons can attach themselves to you. I didn't realize they were real un until uh, I am a recovering addict. Part of my story is I was a crackhead uh, for several years. Hustled, stole, uh, to, to support my habit, uh, lived on the street to support my habit, and uh, when I gave my life to Christ, uh, I hit rock bottom, and in hitting rock bottom, I was living on the streets, didn't have a place to stay. And somebody found me. I don't know how they found me, but and offered me a place to stay. And I began to get myself together. And I uh, didn't go to rehab. It's kind of cold turkey, but God gave me victory. But yeah, years later, years later, as I was driving over the causeway, going to my church for a Friday night Bible study, as I crossed the causeway, that spirit came to me. And it said, it said, make you a pipe. You have money in your pocket. Go buy you some crack, and nobody will ever know the difference. And as I was driving, I, I laughed. And I said what my father would say. Loose you, loose, loose and go. And the spirit left. The, my point is, is that spirits are real. And I have to deal with that particular spirit for the rest of my life because I opened myself up to that spirit. I just want you to know that he tries to isolate you he wants to possess your soul. So here I am, saints, a, a living testimony that, that God will do exact. Uh, mothers and grandmothers and fathers, don't stop praying for your children. It may not happen when you want it. Uh, but God has, I say he has a sense of humor. He has a way of working things out. Uh, the enemy tells us uh, this because he knows that uh, the righteous have a relationship with God and he wants to destroy that connection. Sometimes we, we fall and sometimes we're, we're knocked out. And there's a difference between the two. You can fall, but you have you can be knocked out. Well, let, let me explain the two. Falling means uh, you're dibbing and, 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 and dabbing over there, and you're dibbing and dabbing over here, and, and you get caught. Yeah, that, that, that's a fall, but uh, uh, on, uh, on the other hand, you can get knocked out. Other times, circumstances can conspire and they can hit you in such a way it can knock you out with two T's. Uh, I just want you to know that, that there's a difference, uh, but it, it's all the same. No matter if he comes to knock you out or if he comes to do whatever you have to stand. And that's the point I want to drive home today is because no matter how, <laughs> no matter how difficult it may look, you have to stand. Oh, sometimes you fall and sometimes you, you get knocked out. 
the enemy tries to isolate, you have to tell yourself, I, I, I'm not ashamed because he'll try and shame you. Yeah, because of what you have done, he'll try and, and shame you. But I, I'm a living witness. Hey, I've done some things. But my Lord has forgiven me. I, I, I've done some unspeakable things. But the Lord says, I, I will wipe away all of your... Yeah. Has he ever said to you, uh, your sins are... Maybe not. Maybe, 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 maybe not the Lord. But let, let me try it another way. Have, have your parents, <laughs> you done something and, and your parents uh, said, I, I, I forgive you. Huh. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to let this slide this time. I, 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 I won't even bring it up ever again. I, I, your, I, I give you grace this time. <laughs> He says here that no matter how your enemy tries to attack you, that his grace is sufficient. Yeah. Uh, now, but this, this is what bothered me. I, and, and just a few more minutes and, and I'll be done. He, he says here, we have those who have fallen and they have experienced the, rela the reality of the text, but they don't want to extend the reality to their brother or sister. Yeah, and and uh, we we know some people like that, uh, but but that, that that's that's okay. They, they they have fallen, but when they fell, there was nobody in our particular group around. Uh, don't nobody knew about their 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 failure, so. Uh, they they are seen in a certain light, a what I would call a pseudo uh, uh, purity. What pseudo means is is a, a false purity. That that that's how they are seen. But I, I am here to say that 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 God says uh, He will forgive, and I'm so glad that He will forgive because people will not forgive. They, they can sit at church and, and have committed the same sin that you have committed, but then they will not and won't give you the grace uh, the, that has been extended. Oh, y'all have talked to me now. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the close here. They won't extend the same grace that was extended to them. Anybody know anybody like that? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to point them out, but you, you know someone. <laughs> they, they <laughs> He's saying here that it's not yours to give. And I'm so glad it's not people's gift to give because... You can murder somebody, and the Lord will forgive you of your sins. <laughs> you, you, you can lie on somebody, and the Lord will forgive you of your sin. Hey, hey. you can fornicate with somebody, and the Lord will forgive you of your sin. You can cheat on your wife. But the Lord will forgive you oh, yeah, of your sin. Verse 10 says, your strength is weak. Let me get it right. It's your strength is small. And in 16, it says, uh, a righteous man gets up seven times. <laughs> I just, I just want to say this, <laughs> that, that he gets up seven times. Listen at me. Look at me. 
it's not about you. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's not about you. But it's about the one that we pray to. Yeah, he gets all of the glory. He gets all of the accolades. It's all about him. And that's the crust of my message is that it is not about you, but it's all about The enemy doesn't want you to tap into that. So he wreaks havoc. And if I may say hell, he wreaks it all around you, all about you to keep you off balance. But I want to say that he is the author. Uh, and the finisher, oh, I don't know about you, but he is the author and finisher of my faith. faith. And uh, uh, saints, I want to make it to heaven. I don't know about you, but I want to make it in. Therefore, I will forgive who I need to forgive. I will say I'm sorry to who I need to say I'm sorry. I will kiss who I need to kiss. I will love on who I need to love on because I want to make it to heaven. <laughs> I want to see my daddy. I want to see my mother. Mm. I want to see my sister there. I want to see my big brother there. This is not something that I want to play with. I, I, I don't want to miss heaven. So if I have to love somebody who racially profiles me, yeah. if I have to love somebody who believes that I am inferior, if I have to love somebody who uh, calls voter suppression now voter integrity. I, I'll love you anyway because I want to make it to heaven. When we start to rely on our own ability, that's when we get into trouble. We, we, we think about our own act intellect. We we feel that we're savvy and smart enough. We, we have the right connections. We have the right powerful friends. Well, I want you to know that it doesn't matter who is your friend. It only matters who you confess to. And I confess to the God Almighty. Uh, as a matter of fact, look, is there anybody in here who is not saved? Anybody in here who whose life is not that where it should be. Yeah, I, that's okay. I got a remedy for that if you don't hold your hand up. Let everybody repeat after me. Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Come on, wash me, Lord. Come on, say it like you wash me, Lord. Come on, say it like you mean it. Wash me, Lord. Come on, say it like you mean it. Wash me, Lord. I confess with my mouth. Come on, repeat it. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that your son died and rose again. And because of my confession, I believe, I know that I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a hand praise this morning. That's why you're standing to the feet.